those two beautiful songs all hail the power of Jesus' name and arise, shine, the light has come. Together with that comprehensive prayer has made me feel this morning to bear testimony to the world that I know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came and gave his life for us. Though he gave us the plan of life and salvation, he was crucified, and through his resurrection, it's possible for us to enjoy eternal life. The prophets of old were persecuted, and many of them killed when they taught the word of the Lord. What a serious situation to think of in the world. But I wish to bear my testimony to you today that his church has been reestablished and the gospel is taught in its fullness through a prophet of God. That the Church of Jesus Christ is here upon the earth today and that Jesus is directing the Church through a living prophet, Harold B. Lee. And I would appeal to men everywhere to listen to the words of the Lord as taught by us or by the prophet and listen to his voice. And do not ridicule and persecute and be prepared to destroy. Today, I should like to speak about the role of womanhood in this great church. Where we have such a great body of wonderful men, women, wives, mothers, single women engaged in the work of the Lord and the service of their fellow men. They are affiliated with the Relief Society, the principal women's organization, the primary where our children are instructed, the Sunday school where the gospel is taught to all members, the MIA, which is the activity and social organization for the youth and adults, and its various other capacities are where our women are served with dedication and skill. After discussing business matters with some men the other day, our conversation took on a more personal or informal note, <coughs> and during which one man said, I have the finest, best wife in all the world most wonderful girl. Another said, that is what you think. I think I have the best. A third man said, isn't it a great blessing to have a wife that you love, who loves you, one who is a good mother, a homemaker with high ideals, who believes in God and wants to help her family accept and live the teachings of Jesus Christ? What woman could want any greater glory or tribute than that which comes from an appreciative and loving husband. The applause of homage and homage of the world fades into insignificance when compared to the approbation of God and the expressions of love and appreciation which come from their hearts and lips of those who are nearest and dearest to us. From the beginning, God made it clear that woman is very special and has also very clearly defined her position her duties, her destiny, in this great divine plan. Paul said that man is the image and glory of God, and that woman is the glory of the man. Also, that man is not without the woman, nor the woman without the man in the Lord. You will note that significantly God is mentioned in connection with this great partnership, and we must never forget that one of a woman's greatest privileges blessings and opportunities is to be a co-partner with God in bringing his spirit children into the world. It's a great, it is a great concern to all who understand this glorious concept that Satan and his cohorts are using scientific arguments, nefarious propaganda to lure women away from the, their primary responsibilities as wives, mothers, and homemakers. We hear so much about emancipation, independence, sexual liberation, birth control, abortion, and other insidious propaganda belittling the role of motherhood, all of which is Satan's way of destroying the woman, the home and the family, the basic unit of society. 
Some effective tools include the use of radio, television, and magazines, where pornography abounds and where women are being debased and disgracefully used as sex symbols, sex ploited, some call it. Immodest dress, drugs, and alcohol daily take a tremendous toll through the destruction of virtue and chastity and even lives. With modern electronic devices, communication, and speedy transportation, much more is being heard throughout the world and by many more people than would be otherwise possible and is having its degrading influence and effect. Yes, pornography, drugs, and alcohol are available to young and old in an alarming quantity and are destroying the moral values and further det deteriorating the minds and thought processes of those who succumb to these devilish wilds. President Alan Oakes recently said to the student body of Brigham Young University, we are surrounded by the promotional literature of illicit sexual relations on the printed page and on the screen. For your own good, avoid it. Pornographic or erotic stories and pictures are worse than filthy or polluted food. The body has defenses to rid itself of unwholesome food, but the brain won't vomit back filth. Once recorded, it will always remain subject to recall, flashing its perverted images across your mind and drawing you away from the wholesome things in life." Unquote. It is so important that our young girls keep themselves from this kind of pollution. The girls of today will be the women of tomorrow, and it is necessary that they prepare for that role. Can you imagine the kind of world we will live in in the future? if the girls of today are weakened morally to the extent that virtue will not be taught in their homes and their children, if any, are not nurtured within the walls of a home sanctified by the holy laws of matrimony, marriage is ordained of God, and we must do everything we can to strengthen the ties that bind, to strengthen our homes, and to prepare ourselves by exemplary living to teach our children the ways of God, which is the only way for them to find happiness here and eternal life hereafter. As we enumerate the many important responsibilities a woman has in connection with her duties as a wife, a mother, a homemaker, a sister, a sweetheart, or as a good neighbor, it should be evident that these challenging responsibilities can satisfy her needs to express her talents, her interests, her creativity, dedication, energy, and skill which so many seek to satisfy outside the home. It's impossible to estimate the lasting influence for good a woman can have in any of these roles. Let me remind, let me remind us all of her primary responsibilities. First of all, as I mentioned before, she is a co-partner with God in bringing his spirit children into the world. What a glorious concept. No greater honor could be given. With this honor comes the tremendous responsibilities of loving and caring for those children so that they might learn their duty as citizens and what they must do to return to their Heavenly Father. They must be taught to understand the gospel of Jesus Christ and to accept and live his teachings. As they understand the purpose of life, why they are here and where they are going, they will have a reason for choosing the right and avoiding temptations and buffetings of Satan, who is so very real and determined to destroy them. A mother has far greater influence on her children than anyone else, and she must realize that every word she speaks, every act, every response, her attitude, even her appearance and manner of dress affect the lives of her children and the whole family. It is while a child is in the home that he gains from his mother the attitudes, hopes, and beliefs that will determine the kind of life that he will live and the contribution he will make to society. President Brigham Young expressed the thought that the mothers are the moving instruments in the hands of providence and are the machinery that gives zest to the whole man and guide the destinies and lives of men and nations upon the earth. He further said, let mothers of any nation teach their children not to make war and the children will not grow up and enter into it. When the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone, I will make him and help me. He meant just that, and so presented Eve to Adam. 
We are taught that a man should leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, and that they should be one flesh, and thus is described the relationship that should exist between husband and wife. It is said that behind every good man there is a good woman, and it is my experience and observation that this is generally true. It's interesting to note that when executives of companies look for new employees or are planning promotions for their experienced ones, they almost always want to know what kind of wife a man has. This seems to be very important. In the Church, when men are being considered for new priesthood offices, the question is always raised about the worthiness of the wife and whether or not she can give him full support. Women, you are of great strength and support to the men in your lives, as they sometimes, and they sometimes need it most when they deserve it less. A man can have no greater incentive, no greater hope, no greater strength than to know his mother, his sweetheart, or his wife has confidence in him and loves him. And men should strive every day to live worthy of that love and confidence. President Hugh Brown once said, There are people fond of the saying that women are weaker instruments, but I don't believe it. Physically they may be, be but spiritually, morally, religiously, and in faith, what man can match a woman who is really converted to the gospel? Women are more willing to make sacrifices than are men, more patient in suffering, more earnest in prayer. They are the peers and often the superior to men in resilience, in goodness, in morality, and faith." Unquote. And girls, don't underestimate your influence on your brothers and your sweethearts. As you live worthy of their love and respect, you can help greatly to determine that they will be clean and virtuous, successful and happy. Always remember that you can go much further on respect than on popularity. I was reading the other day of a report of a conversation between two young prisoners of war in Vietnam. One said, I am sick of war, bombers, destruction, prison camps, and everything and everybody. I feel much the same way myself, said the other. But there's a girl back home who is praying that I will come back. She cares, and it really helps me endure all these atrocities. To mothers, daughters, and women everywhere, let me stress the fact that because of your great potential and influence for good in the lives of all of us, Satan is determined to destroy you. You cannot compromise with him. You must have the courage, the strength, desire, and determination to live as the Lord would have you live, good, clean lives. Girls, keep yourselves virtuous and worthy of a fine young man who has likewise kept himself clean so that together you can go to the house of the Lord to be sealed in the holy bonds of matrimony for time and for all eternity, and prepare a home where God will be pleased to send his spirit children. Then you will be able to face your children, secure in the knowledge that, you own, that your own example is the way to happiness and eternal progression. They are entitled to this heritage. I humbly pray that you will live so as to give it to them. The whole purpose of the creation of earth was to provide a dwelling place where the spirit children of God might come and be clothed in mortal bodies and keep their second estate, prepare themselves for salvation and exaltation. The whole purpose of the mission of Jesus Christ was to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. And the whole purpose of mothers and fathers should be to live worthy of this blessing and to assist God the Father and his Son Jesus Christ in their work. No greater honor could be given to woman than to assist in this divine plan, and I wish to say without equivocation that a woman will find greater satisfaction and joy and make a greater contribution to mankind by giving a wise and worthy, being a wise and worthy mother, raising good children than she could make in any other vocation. The Lord has promised great blessings if we will do our part in this divine plan. President Herbert Hoover gave this incentive. If we could have but one, but one generation of properly born, trained, educated, and healthy children, a thousand other problems of government would, be, would vanish. We would assure ourselves of healthier minds, more vigorous bodies, direct, direct the energies 
of our nation to greater heights of achievement. How fortunate we are to have the Church of Jesus Christ established in these latter days with a prophet of God upon the earth to receive divine revelation and direction for the children of men. We are blessed to know the personality of God, his attitudes and attributes and characteristics. We've been given the plan of life and salvation. We're continually directed as to how we should live so that we may have happiness here and eternal life hereafter. We have organizations set up to instruct and educate us in all matters pertaining to our temporal and spiritual welfare. One of the finest programs the Church has instituted is what we call Family Home Evening, where all members of the family are called together once a week. It is quite thrilling to me when I contemplate that every Monday night evening all over the Church throughout the world our families are gathered together in their homes and the Father, where possible, as head of the house, is directing his family in a discussion of all problems pertaining to their spiritual and temporal welfare, using a manual which has been carefully prepared and distributed to each family in the Church. Where these gatherings are held regularly and properly, they are of inestimable value to the family unit, as is evidenced by the many testimonies we receive. I wish to urge every family to follow this program, and I can promise you that as you do so, you will be greatly blessed in unity, love, and devotion, and be delighted with the outcome. Of course, family prayer should be a significant part of this evening, as well as regular family prayer and individual prayer every day. I can think of nothing sweeter than a home where a man is living his religion, magnifying his priesthood, with his wife supporting him in every way, where love and harmony exist. And, to whether, and together they are trying to raise a family of righteous sons and daughters whom they can take back into the presence of their Heavenly Father. This may sound like an impossible dream, but I can assure you that there are thousands of such families within the Church, and it is something that can be a reality for every one of us as we accept and live the teachings of Jesus Christ. How fortunate a child is to live in such a home, and how great will be the joy of the parents in their posterity. I repeat, Satan is trying to keep us from the full enjoyment which comes from keeping the commandments of God. We must never forget, and we must teach our children to know that Satan is real and determined to destroy us. He knows the importance and significance of the family unit. He knows that entire civilizations have survived or disappeared depending on whether the family life was strong or weak. We can keep him out of our homes by living and teaching our children to live the principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ, thereby re resisting temptation when it comes, as it surely will. Girls, prepare yourselves to assume the roles of mothers by gaining knowledge and wisdom through good education. We teach that the glory of God is intelligence, and so we must all be aware of what is going on around us and be prepared to thwart Satan in his attempts to divert us from our divine destiny. With knowledge, wisdom, determination, and the Spirit of the Lord to help us, we can succeed. We also believe that should, women should involve themselves in community affairs and in the auxiliary organizations of the Church, but always remembering that home and children come first and must not be neglected. Children must be made to feel that mothers love them and is keenly interested in their welfare and everything that they do. This cannot be turned over to someone else. Many experiments have been made and studies carried out which prove beyond doubt that a child who enjoys motherless love and care progress in every way much more rapidly than those who are left, is left, in, who are left in institutions or with others where mother's love is not available or expressed. Fathers, too, must assume their proper role and responsibility. Children need both parents. While fathers are at home, they should assume with mothers the duties attendant upon the young children, the discipline and the training of the older ones, and be a listening ear for those who need to discuss their problems and who want guidance and counseling. Through love, establish a good relationship 
and line of communication with your children. I would urge all husbands, fathers, and brothers, and sons to show our great respect and love and try to be worthy of the women who are our wives, mothers, daughters, sisters, sweethearts. There's no sure way for a man to show his lack of character, good breeding, and quality than for him to show lack of respect for woman or to do anything that would discredit or degrade her. It is unchristianlike, unfair, and displeasing to God for any husband or father to assume the role of dictatorship and adopt the attitude that he is superior in any way to his wife. At the area conference in Munich, Germany, President Lee said, If you husbands remember that the most important for the Lord's work that you will ever do will be within the walls of your own home. You can maintain family ties if you will. If you will strengthen your family ties and be mindful of your children, be sure that home is made a strong place in which children can come for anchor that they need in this day of trouble and turmoil. Then love will abound and your joy will be increased. As women realize the importance of the home and family, and with their husbands keep the commandments of God to multiply and replenish the earth, to love the Lord and their neighbors as themselves, to teach their children to pray and to walk uprightly before him, then will their joy be increased and their blessings multiplied to the extent that they will hardly be able to contain them. These blessings will be joy and rejoicing in your posterity of healthy, happy children, which those blessings, those who reject these way of life will never know these blessings. There will be peace, satisfaction, and accomplishment of children who succeed and in turn make their own contribution to making this a better world for generations yet unborn. What a joyous privilege and blessing it will be for those families who through obedience and love have prepared themselves to go back into the presence of our Heavenly Father and have it said of them, each of them, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into thy joy, the joy of thy Lord. May this be our privilege and blessing, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.